Sure. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, I'm BBZ, a.k.a. Uh, Jordan Drummond, and um, I, I run BBZ Poker, and I work with Fenton and Lex and Spraggy and a lot of other guys and, and try to coach them and, and help them with their No Limit game. And uh, do it exceptionally well, in my opinion. Better better, better than anyone I've ever worked with. All right, for the shirt chat. Oh, oh look, look at him. Look how That's good he looks. Good. That's pretty good. So what we are going to do today is we're going to have a little chat and we're going to play heads up five times and it will be best of five. Do you want to do a forfeit? Do you want to do, you want to do a forfeit? It's not like a like something silly. Uh, me no, we Parker. can do whatever you want. What, yeah, what do you want to do? All right. So what me and Parker did, if you're up for it, is we played five times and whoever loses has to pay the other person to play a 1k hyper. So you got to play it straight away. At like the end heads, of the stream. heads up hyper? Six max yeah, hyper? Yeah. No, heads up hyper. Heads up hyper. So if you, okay. if you win I, I send you 1k and we sweat the hyper so you have the chance to win 2k yep. does that sound good and then am oh. i am i yeah uh, yeah heads up hyper okay sure yeah i'm in whatever sure okay sounds good well yeah that's well, right I'll jump i showed in up i showed I'm up gonna, for this i'm gonna this try to distract know. you a little bit with some questions but, yeah okay uh, i'm a little bit nervous i got smashed last week trina by alexander botez who's obviously a chess streamer so my confidence in my heads up game is at an all-time low all right like george said for those who don't know this is the man that you'll hear me banging on about all the time it is the man who I start working with I think about two years ago, a little bit over two years ago. And ever since then, um, you know, we've started to win a lot of cash. Still some progress to make, but we're gonna ask some questions about Jordan rather than about me today. I wanna ask, first off, who is more impressive for what they've done for you, Parker or Connor? I wanna get I wanna get some tough questions out of the way. I wanna see. Oh, oh my God, why would you <laughs> ask that? Why I would you <laughs> ask that? I wanna, I wanna put you in a few tricky spots so you've gotta actually contemplate rather than just ask you about like the easy things first, because I want to get one nil up in the in the in the challenge. That's what I want to do. That's brutal. <laughs> um, that's brutal. It's like because yeah. obviously, if you like, I don't think Parker would be offended by this. But if I ask you, like Connor's clearly to this point had a better poker career, just from like pure monetary monetary standpoint. Yeah, sure. But like Parker obviously has done ridiculous things with the stream as well. So I, yeah, I know they're two good friends. So I want you to pick one. Like who you're more impressed with? <laughs> so who am I more impressed with? Um, probably probably Connor. But that's more because when it comes to uh he uses all this time bank by the way chat he's using yeah exactly i'm using my time bank so i'm trying to think about this damn question <laughs> um when it comes to yeah i would say i would say connor but that's that's because i'm more i'm more like parker um so connor doesn't study a lot and he's extraordinarily successful playing and just like putting in reps putting in hours putting in volume has kind of led connor to where he's at uh, he's, he's played just tons of no limit he's pleased he's, he's traveled a lot he's had really high level conversations with people but what connor hasn't done is study a lot when you say study a lot, you and, just mean like he's not one of the people that like studies all the time because like i lived with him and he did study right like it's it's just not maybe yeah so i mean he yeah he's not he's not like my understanding of connor like and i've lived with connor um, for a while but my experience with him has been that it's not that he's like that he's that he's you know it's not a laziness thing at all he puts in tons of work tons of work but he's not um it's not like he's it's not like he's it's not like he's had the success that he's had because he's he's built he's used more, more solvers or used better solvers or um he's been in he's run more aggregated reports you know because he had a server set up first so with connor it's not about it's not about like really it's not about access to like higher quality information I guess just kind of being it's, it's, so it's just been like just, just like play and pick it's not, yeah, yeah, like yeah smart smart is a bit like disingenuous I think almost but you're still gonna jam yeah I know you're still gonna jam your little <laughs> BS tissue box um oh that's one nil chat that's one nil already we'll take that all day long <laughs> I feel like Jordan was a bit distracted NH. there all right we got it no, so that, was, you, no that was good that was, that was good dude you got me if you like this content please hit the sub button and also get in the comments to tell me what you like and even what you don't like. You gotta did you, go did you decline the rematch? Time. No, it doesn't, it doesn't okay. work. All right, All right, to go a little bit different, I know you've uh, talked about your past a little bit on your own stream, but for those who might not know you so well, when did you get into poker? And what was it that got you into it? And what was it kind of that kept you in it, I would say? Um, okay, so what So what made me get into poker? What made me stay in it for as long as I have? Is that the... Yeah, yeah. Like, I just like to give a little bit of history because obviously sure. some people get in the game and then they like they drop out. But obviously, I know, I know as well things went and stuff. But... So, 
yeah, so as far as like, wow, you like the check raise, bud. Um, so as far as why I got into poker, I was broke, so that helped. So for for me, like being like not having money just meant that I had low opportunity costs. Um, so it was easier for me to go into poker than it would be if you if you're let's say. Uh, you're studying at MIT or something like that's going to be, it's going to be more difficult for that person to, to go. I can't believe I'm going to just win. I'm going to go two nil up straight away. This is pretty messed up, dude. Like last week, the games went on for so long. <laughs> this could be quick, dude. We could, we could have like a 15 minute interview here. They've all lasted like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, but you're in a spot of butter. There's no way you'd slow roll me though, is there? No, I'm not slow rolling you. I have a spot. Uh... You made, That's a bluff, fold, dude. you made a massive fold, dude. You made a ah, you made a massive fold. What's your fold? Did you actually have it, or are you lying? No, no, I had, I'm it, not, I had I'm... it. I had it. I had two pair. I had two pair. Did you? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean... had I had a pair. I had I had a pair. I had a very good pair with no blocker, <laughs> so it was not easy to fold at all. Uh, nice hand, dude. Nice hand. But you uh, you talked me into it. So good did job. I? Damn it, man. Uh, yeah, I... you did. You did. You did talk me into it actually, because I would call it. I think a lot, but but you did manage to talk me into it, so I appreciate it. Um, thank you, Parker. <laughs> thank you. For that. By the way, Jordan Jordan's way of putting you down down is not like classic like in your face but it's just like just so you know i'm superior to you and i will take advantage of that <laughs> in a nice subtle way <laughs> have to try to needle have to try to needle um and yeah so so because yes yeah, so i think that people some people might think that like when i when you when you make like a big decision like you know you commit to something like poker i, I think for, for, for some people it's just a lot harder you know like if you went to school if you're if you're a graduate or whatever like it's just a lot yeah, harder like if you're 35 years easy. old and you have a family and you have a well-paying job and and someone comes to you or me and they're like, do you think I should play poker full time? We'll be like, fuck no. Like, you know, don't yeah, exactly. give that yeah. up to chase this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I didn't have that, right? I was I was on my friend's couch, you know, my parents lived in a different country. So like, I was just like, I was I was a zero. And so poker was was an easy transition for me in that sense. Um, so I was broke. Tom Dwan was really successful. He was asking for like hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in poker on Poker After Dark. And I was just like, I'm going to go do this. And, you know, I just, uh, I just kept going. And then as far as as why did I stay in it as long as I have bit of the same reason um, which is that like the opportunity cost was just really high to leave uh, so like you know it, it sucks to say money but like it's, it's just it's a reality of the thing is that like the more successful you are the harder it is to quit you know yeah, in general. you put a lot of time uh, into it to like then put that energy yeah. elsewhere and try and get to the same part yeah, what yeah was, exactly what was the first time when you really knew like because obviously well, I, I don't, I don't actually know for you, but for me, when you go on the poker journey, I'm not thinking like 10 years down the line, like I just want to play poker. I just love poker. I'm not like, this is 100% what I'm going to do. But was there a point when you had like a score or you just started like crushing in certain games that you were like, all right, I'm good enough to do this. I can make a profession. I can like change my life playing this game. Uh, um, well, so, I'm a, so prior to like really committing to playing, I had been, I dabbled a little bit. And so like I, I played the daily dollar and I took second in that. And that was, and like I ended up needing all that money to pay bills, rent, and stuff. Um, but at that, like when I took second in that tournament, I, even though it was a, it was a one dollar tournament, I had like ten thousand people in it. At that point, I was kind of like, I was there was like a kind of a change where I started like studying a lot. I started, I started, I took some of the money, obviously, I cashed out a lot of it to to live, and then I took a large fraction of the balance and used it to um, subscribe to Poker Savvy Plus and other training sites. Um, you keep getting put in tough spots when you're you have a good uh, flow. <laughs> oh my god, dude! How do you just always have the best hand? <laughs> I mean, so I just hero called there. you with upkiss for what it's worth. So that time, I that time I called it there. So nh. So anyway, so you had you you started taking it a little bit more serious with the yeah. So that was so so so, so yeah. So I started like investing and in studying and stuff and training and all all the rest of it. But as far as once I started, so in November, so I was in that was probably in like. I don't know, April of, of 2009. And then oh, so in November... Were, I didn't actually know that you were... So you were in America pre-Black Friday? Or were you already in Canada at this point? I was already in, I was already in Canada. Should I borrow this turn, Jordan? Tell the truth. Give me a quick give me a quick coaching tip. I felt like I didn't want to get checked. We had today. the same hand. We had the same hand. I showed 10-6 of spades. I flashed. I don't know if I caught it. No, I but we both had 10-6. <laughs> nice hand. All right, so you, you you start you start studying a little bit more. Was there because I said it to Parker last week, or sorry, two weeks ago, and it's not disingenuous for me to say this, but you and Parker and a couple of others would be like the most influential people that I've had in my poker career in terms of Parker just being very 
you know, generous with his knowledge from as far back as I can remember him. And then when me and you started working together, it uh, it brought my game to a point where I could actually compete in some of the higher games. But when you look back, is there anyone in particular that um, really changed the game for you? Or were you like always a uh, lone wolf? Like you just did your own thing? Oh my God, I'm in another one of these spots. <laughs> well, I've gone all in Jordan with trips there. Is it too much? George, 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 George's good. George's gonna start getting mad if I keep uh, if I keep running this. No, 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 we're good, we're good. I like the talking. I like the talking. Um, yeah, so there's a guy named Nicholas Emicus, uh, okay. aka Frenza, who I would say like fits the description of what you're talking about. Not from like a technicals perspective, like when I'm playing the game, but just in terms of he still changed my thinking a lot. So I was playing. Um, I guess you'd say like I was playing like 15, 30, 60, and hundred dollar sit and goes for a very long time. And I was playing 18 man sit and goes. So that was the, the buy in level. And at the time, um, I, I was probably the biggest winner. Uh, in the games that I was playing, and cool if, not, if, if I wasn't if I wasn't the biggest winner, I might have been the second biggest winner. But like yeah. it's like on Shark Scope, I have those like all the stars or whatever that go with the Shark Scope <laughs> leaderboards. So I was one of the biggest winners in those games, first, second, third, whatever. And but like the the the, the six max games and the nine max games. This was mostly playing 18s. The six max games and the nine max games ran much higher in terms of buy-in level yeah. um and so the 18s like i was like i said i was capping out at 100 these games ran up to, to 1k um and nick nick was not as big a winner in the 18s as i was but he was already playing like some of the really 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 high stakes games and he was doing quite well and he was just like what are you doing like you're such a nit which is true and um uh you know and i was like i, I don't i just didn't think i could i could hang with those guys like i just didn't think i was good enough um, lots of self doubt around the ability to compete and play was, with people was, at that was level. Was there any part of that self doubt that came back from like, if you go broke, it's like such a disaster for you compared to other people, or was it just you had the role, but you just really didn't, you just really didn't believe that you could win those games? No, I I, I thought that they were better than me. Um, I thought that they <laughs> were, I thought that they would out compete me. Um, I so there were there's a website called sitandgogrinders.com. It's very similar to bbcpoker.com today. And I used that website to study. And a lot of the players that I studied on that site were, were the players playing in these games. So there was like, it, it was, there was like a, a bit of a perspective, like they were my coach. Yeah. And so like that, I had yeah, it's like, like a if lot I end up on a him. table with you, Ape Styles, Yargo, and Lucky Fish, I'm like, oh, damn. Obviously at this point, that is still true that all those players are better than me. But like, if I was playing for another few years, start getting like bigger results and you guys were coaching me for another two, two years, even if I was at that level, I'd still probably be like, oh, these guys are like who I learned from. So they're obviously going to be better, you know, at all times. And I'm, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have another hand without blockers. It's just so annoying. <laughs> That's unlucky, dude. That so is, sick that is quite so sick. lucky dude if you if you if you lose this it's over I'm straight really, yeah away. I, I might i, I might we'll, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll play the five games regardless when saying that i went two nil up against parker and he almost i did end up winning three. yeah but he had me on the ropes down to like four big blinds you okay you feeling the pressure this this is probably the, the highest pressure kind of situation being a poker ever right yeah it's pretty it's just pretty ridiculous <laughs> i'm running pretty good I'll, I'll i'll hold my hands up you haven't had much of a chance so far I just keep making the, the nuts, and you keep making really strong hands. Yeah, I mean, you're doing you're doing well, getting getting the money with the best of it. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so you eventually decided after talking to this person that you were going to play the higher stakes. Is that how it? Yeah. So out? so yeah. So Nick was successful in the games, and he was he was just like you know he 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 convinced me that I would be successful in the games if I stepped up and competed. So so I did, and um, but it took a lot. I mean, it took a lot of like watching him and talking to him and him kind of like coaxing me into playing and battling at, at higher limits. It just didn't it didn't just happen immediately at all and did so. you eventually graduate to become one of the biggest winners in those games as well uh, no so six max turbos um i probably got to uh like i mean i was playing 1ks and 2ks on occasion but parker actually was one of the biggest winners in the 2ks and 1ks i was a very very big winner in the in the 300s 200s and 100s but um for some reason in the 500s 1ks and 2ks just never happened i mean 500s probably i was probably very successful but 1ks and 2ks not as much just and, had it again, uh, dude. Just, just, just had it again. Did you actually? Yeah. Just had I, it again. I folded it. I folded it. I folded it in with showdown value. Like I mean, I had ace high, but um, feels like I mean, it feels like I have to call some of these bets, but like you know, it's, it's, maybe I maybe I shouldn't. Um, well, from flushes and, over here, uh, let's see. If you yeah. could, if you could go back in time to, so what age would you have been when this whole process is going down as you're making your way up the single ladder? Oh, good question. Um, 
like 24 maybe if you could go back in time now with all the knowledge you have um not necessarily the poker knowledge but just everything is there anything that you tell 24 year old jordan to do differently because one thing that like i don't talk about it as much on my stream but if i ever have life things that have happened and it's like to do with financial side of things jordan is someone who's like i talk to and take the advice from so i would imagine that you would probably give yourself some bits of golden wisdom if you could go back is there anything one thing in particular that like even other people could take away from it or is that is that too tough to like just pick one thing um is there any one thing that i would tell myself that I, so I, I just this is just me telling myself right yeah yeah like what just a, like, like a conversation ah uh... That's that's a, that's another good question. Um, it's tempting to say yes, but um, I don't think I don't think there's anything that like. I mean, I would tell myself to I would tell myself to get a really good accounting program a lot earlier. Um, when you say accounting program, like do you mean to explain explain that? Because I'm not even sure what that is. So, oh, pair again, Fintan. You folded a pair to me, dude. I'm such a nib. I had it, of course. I just had two pair. Just had two pair. Don't tell me that shit. I did. You're gonna make me tilt it. I had two um, pair. I had two pair. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I had bond pair. Um, yeah. So you know. So what? What I'm referring to to accounting program. What do I mean? I mean uh, for BBZ when I first started, the accounting was just like not there. It wasn't at like a low level. It wasn't at a high level. It was just not good at all. Um, I can see your face, just so you know. I don't know if you want if you want to be squint, squint, squinting like that before we. Oh yeah, that's time. right. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay, I had Queen Dude, High. I just had, I had a gut, just had trips. I had a gut, I had a gut shot. Here. I had a gut shot in Queen High, and I was like, uh, it feels like I'm supposed to kind of peel this, but you're like, but I'm like right at like the shitty showdown value level. And you're like, I can see your face. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, I guess I'll pass. <laughs> so you get a good account program. I, I'm not 100. It's just yeah. It's just... So yeah. So when it comes to when it comes to staking, right? So when I first started staking people, I wasn't really paying much attention to. How did you start staking people? Um, I know I'm cutting across and like again, but that's probably something I should ask you about. Like, how did you just start like a couple of friends, or did you straight away be like, this is going to be a business? You just took on everyone because it was a bit easier, I'd say, to get horses back in the day because the gains are so soft. I don't know if that's that's just my guess from looking from the outside. Like, I remember two plus two, and people would just pick ten horses for a Sunday schedule, and they wouldn't even know them. There'd be no trust. It'd just be, I'll send you some funds, and I'm not saying that you took place in these things, but like, you, I don't think you would see that today in the games. Yeah. So. It was much easier for sure to get um, to get to, to work with people that that's that's true Maybe. at the same time oh you made a big fold I had the best hand there it's a bit annoying a little jerk, a little jerk. I, had, I had a thin value then too I had a, I had a pair of kings I had a one pair of pair of kings so when you fold that I had it makes me feel like my best bet um, and yeah so 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 you could just you could you could you could just kind of like fire um, at, at anyone I I use a site called part-time poker to help me why do i just have a bluff catcher here i have a pair of tents <laughs> you're getting put in a lot of tough spots here but i just had it again i haven't in all the heads up challenges so far this is the best i've won by a considerable margin and uh you're definitely the best person that i've played against heads up uh maybe close to parker i'm not sure how you guys would compare heads up but uh i'm, I'm enjoying how this is going i won't lie yeah i bet you are i bet you are i mean i'm about to be i'm about to be out of the last one <laughs> um so yeah you were saying it was a lot easier to pick up people um and i can't remember exactly what else the train of thought was bluff jordan isn't it that one's a bluff i mean kind of i had a flush before the river but <laughs> it was still a bluff on the river <laughs> if you were yeah, if you were going back in time would you do it the same way would you still want to like would you still get involved in staking because from what oh, i can yeah, tell for sure you are one of the few people i've never really heard say a bad thing about staking but like when i hear even pads and I remember, uh, was it Zima? Was that his name? Was a massive staker, and there was a few others, and like they just have horrendous things to say about like the staking, like the stress of it, and like when a big series comes along. Um, but you 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 do it the exact same way. Like there's no regrets on that front. It's not a case of you put so much work in and then you've got good at it that now you're like you're in there. Does that make sense as a question? Yeah, no, I would, I I I regret. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything about staking nice hand um I, I wouldn't i wouldn't i don't i don't have any so i think that those people so first of all i mean i don't, I don't know zima but and i and i followed zima at the time but i would say that it backfired for zima um like it didn't it didn't end well like that's that's my understanding uh with his relationship with elio and like the whole thing um when it comes to pads i think pads has like a lot of really positive things to say about staking but and i don't want to speak for him but um you cheeky devil i have a boat so lucky dude unlucky 
<laughs> Jordan, 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 I got Jordan into his shirt. His wife's gonna be fuming, and now Jordan's gonna be fuming. He did it. I'm gonna get swept. We're gonna go zero and three. We might even go zero and five. I mean, like I'm getting, I'm getting just murked. I honestly, I don't think I've made uh, less than not paired any points. Oh, that's that's, that's, a, that's that's a way to win challenges. I mean, like um, I kind of feel like you have a pair of nines. So I had a gut shot and I didn't jack, bluff dude. because I had a jack. I, I, I oh my god, I made the jack. Is there anyone in particular? Because I know that Connor at one point went from, I think, horse of yours to housemate to obviously very good friend and to absolute crusher. And I know yeah. there's been quite a few stories like that of people who have really, you know, like blown up after coming in and maybe like, you know, not, obviously not in the exact same situation. Like nobody comes into your stable as one Connor B1 the way he is today. Yeah. But sure. is there anyone in particular that like you take the most pride in from that? Because I know it's Connor. It is Connor. It is Connor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Yargo's um, got to be up there as well, right? Because like Yargo's gone from like me not knowing that he even played poker to showing up and absolutely ruining everybody's life in the midst of uh, Scoop and the GG series and everything. He's just been insane. Yeah, Yargo. So the difference, the so Yar and Yargo, I, 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 and I don't take credit for either one. I'm just like you know, as far as you know, if someone said like, yeah, with, it's with Connor, it's just different because like because we live together. Um, and I worked with Connor when he's a little bit of a shithead. Um, so he was, he was, you know, like he was a young kid and, uh, I have to hear a call again. Um, <laughs> um, I bought a pair, which is like, it's, it's a bit of a wide call for sure, but it's, uh, I have an ace kicker, which makes it, it's a, it's a difficult bottom pair to fold, I think. Um, so you help, you help Connor yeah. in lots of ways and obviously he's... Yeah. So Connor, yeah. Connor had like, was more ways than one. He was in a lot of makeup before he, before I, I put him on a plane and flew him out to Canada. So, so was it just the two of you living together in Canada? No, so it was me, Connor, Nick, so friends, the same guy uh, I mentioned before. And oh, I probably Maz Wright was probably there as well. Have you? I don't know. No, you don't have to uh, tell the story if I'm putting you on the spot too much. But have you ever told the story about the cat that you ended up with on any stream? Yeah, so I mean, I. Which, I, I, which, I, I, which I, I, one I'm of them to... was the, the, the person who. <laughs> with the cat? Yeah. So that's actually Modzilla PL, so Ian Motter. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with who that is. Yeah, but, I do. Yeah, um, of course. You're spicy. Yeah, yeah. small time. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Ian, Ian Motter, uh, Mozilla PL. We all lived in the same apartment building, which was just by chance. We didn't, we didn't try to do this. So I lived with Connor, Frenza, and Mazarite, and then Mozilla PL, aka Ian, uh, lived downstairs in the same building. And Nick, Frenza, would go out on smoke breaks, and like they ended up just like kind of. Nick was would be in the elevator, and Nick would just talk poker, and then they eventually kind of was like, "Oh, you you play poker, you play poker," and it's just kind of serendipitous. There was no, was, which is kind of crazy. This is a bit ridiculous how well everyone here is coming on the river for Max Payne. Oh, just a turn. No problem, buddy. Jay, Jeej, that's three. <laughs> We're going to play it out, that's though. Three. Yeah. Just got swept. That's fine. That's fair. I'm sorry, dude. I actually feel a little bit bad how well I've just run. I know I know you wouldn't feel bad if the roles were reversed, so I shouldn't. But no, I, do I wouldn't. Little... Yeah, you're good. You're good. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little salty because I, I just got absolutely... <laughs> I got swept so fast. Like, I got swept so fast. So it's, it's difficult to be like, you know... <laughs> I'll because I'm just kind of annihilated. Um, you you got look look look. You did get annihilated by the cards rather than me, which is uh, which is the truth. And I'm not just saying that. I did I win? I think I, I think I won one hand. I, I bet I bet seven. I think I bet seven three. I bet seven three on the river. And which is, by the way, did you hear what my hand was? I had seven three. I bet I bet seven three on the river. You called. I won the hand, and that was it. Like, Look, Jordan, was... all, all I'm going to say, Jordan, is if you ever need any coaching. Yeah, exactly. My... This, is, this is what always happens. This is what always happens. This is the natural next step. If you need, if you need coaching, <laughs> head over to Easy with Aces. <laughs> oh, fuck me. All right. So, uh, uh, so you were saying. Yeah, uh... so the, the cat thing. Yeah. So the cat thing was, I don't even know what I was talking about before, but the cat thing was, um, so that's the guy, Ian. And he had a friend who just was in a bad, bad place who had like a bunch of animals. Um, and he was just, you know, he just talked me into it. I was in his apartment and he's like, you want a cat? And I was like, no, nope, of course not. Why the hell would I want a cat? If I wanted a cat, I'd go get one. He's like, well, I've, I've got a buddy. I know a guy who's like out of dollars and has like 15 animals, can't feed them. And like his, his place just, you know, basically smells like cat piss and he just can't take care of them. I was like, okay. He's like, will you take one? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, thanks, dickhead. So like now I feel terrible if I don't take one. So I did. I can't even win with that. 
that. <laughs> like that. I felt like that was the nuts. I felt like that was the nuts. Um, and uh, yeah, so I so I did, so I took the cat. And um, my, my wife my wife my wife now like loves the cat, but uh, you know it was, it she was actually a, loved the cat for the first two or three months. But after the first two or three months, she was like, I didn't choose this damn cat. And I was, was like, Was she Listen. wife at the time, or would she have been girlfriend? No, she was girlfriend then. She was girlfriend then. She was girlfriend then. So how long yeah. have you guys been together? It's been quite some time, right? Yeah. Uh, 2000, uh, like January of 2011, basically. So did she live with Connor as well then? No, so she was, so she didn't live, I, I lived with Connor when I was dating her, okay. but she didn't live with me with Connor. She lived with Nick for a very short period of time. Uh, yeah, you just need your own space eventually. Yeah. But also, <laughs> it, it I don't even good. know, I don't, like, I, I don't have that in me to raise this flop heads up, Jordan, it's just good. I got annoyed, I had 5-3. I'm not kidding either. <laughs> I just keep losing pops. So I was like, I'll try to win a pot a different way. Uh, we'll, we'll give it the raise with a 5 3. Is the cat, so is the cat still around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat's still around. Yeah, my daughter loves the cat, man. My daughter is just like, you know, she, she, my, my, my daughter asks questions. My daughter asks, like, is the cat going to die? And I'm like, yes, eventually, but not for a long time. And then she starts crying. I don't want the cat to die. <laughs> And I'm like, my, yeah, she's three years old. I don't know if you, for people who have kids, I don't know if this is like the death age, but my daughter is like obsessed with like mortality Just and she's terrified it. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. All, anything can die. Anything that can die. If I'm going to die, if my wife's going to die, she lays in bed, she's about to go to sleep. She starts crying spontaneously. I'm like, baby, what's wrong? She's like, you're going to die. I'm like, not for a long time. Okay. You know how old your grandparents are? See how they're still going? I'm good. I got some time left. Don't worry about it. People in the chat, there's uh, Longbow says my true old is too. So the exact same situation. Yeah, going okay. on. Dude, it took me until about I would say two years ago until I stopped being afraid of dying. Uh I just I used to have panic attacks at night. So like I I hope that oh, you, really? you have to you get to stop uh I didn't have it in all my childhood years though. Like it was after like okay. my best friend died, it just like it messed with my head a little bit. And okay, it was all I could sure. think about it. But then I just start reading some philosophy and start reading um or taking C B D and we're good. Okay, now. yeah, what kind of yeah, what kind of philosophy did you were you reading? Um so I first got into it by reading um an author called Ryan Holiday stuff. Uh, I listened to his podcast and it's like a quite uh, simple introduction because it's more anecdotal but references like um, stoic quotes and like puts them alongside like current people that would be considered stoic. Um, like he talk, he uses um, when Kennedy was under attack and Churchill and I think, I can't remember who else he uses but that like made me gravitate towards um, like wanting to like look into it further and now I've read The Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I read Seneca every night before I go to bed and we read this book you probably can't see it but it's there's a daily stoic it's just like one meditation a day we read it every day on a stream um so yeah it's, I just I'm trying obviously I only got into it about I'd say 13 14 months ago so I haven't made my way through like 20 books I've probably read like five of the like more well-known books but we're getting there yeah okay cool good for you man <clears throat> yeah I've, right. I haven't started this much I know a lot of people in the chat um would love if because i asked you what would you give yourself as a piece of advice going back and it was very specific to you because of yeah it was to me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no no i know like it wasn't like the the pearl of wisdom i was hoping that the chat could be like oh my god i'm gonna be a billionaire thanks to jordan let's go but if <laughs> sorry guys i know the one thing you tell me all the time on bbcpoker.com is the best value is to get the uh pre-flop charts and so obviously you consider them very important but if you were going to, if you're, I'm sure you do this all the time with the people that you back and the people that are close to you, but if you were going to talk to someone who was currently playing an ABI of $11 to get them beaten 109 plus, like what, what would you, what would you say to them? Like what would be the steps that you think are most important in today's game? Uh, I would say get the charts, first of all. Um, if you're playing like ABI <laughs> $11, .com, I would... Hashtag ad. Well, I mean, it's pre-flop <laughs> strategy. Um, so did you have it again or you bluffed me finally? I uh no I I had Jack Deuce and then I hit it straight on the river. I had Jack Deuce with the Jack you, of Hearts. You little. <laughs> I I had Jack Ten with the Ten of Hearts. <laughs> well, you're looking hard to. How do you how do you win that hand? How do you win that hand? <laughs> how do you win that hand? Um. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. So I'd say that that for most for most people post flop post flop is very important. Uh, but but like the game the game is just like it's mostly a pre flop game. Uh, and I think that that's something that people don't really appreciate because like so so much happens after the flop but especially in tournaments right you've got like 10 big blinds which is like a push botting stack 15 big blinds where there's so much bet resteal um you know 20 25 like it's still lots of raise reshove um and even like you know even like as stack depths as deep as like 40 there's a lot of reshoving it's just that people don't know it you know like buttons you know, small blind versus button there's a lot of a lot of reshoving at that stack depth um okay we got it we got a hero call one that was a pretty wide hero call too it's a pretty wide hero call <laughs> 
Look, um, I, 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 I do feel bad that I run in so good, but at the same time, if I whitewash you 5 0, like we might need to talk about maybe renaming the whole BBZ brand and it might need to be. Yeah, yeah. EWA, sure. I'll, I'll be sure to try to win one. I'll be sure to try to win one then. I'll be sure to try to win one because you're not getting your name on the door, buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, you know, just got the nuts again, Jordan. So I'll, I think, I think I'll cap it out of pot and just watch you cry and call your turned Queen Nine or whatever. I haven't had the bluff once so far. It's fantastic. <laughs> I called because you said you had the nuts, and I had a jack blocker, so I believed you. I was like, I, I, I believed you like that, that like you were polarized, and I was like, well, if he's polarized, then the jack might be good. <laughs> so I called. That was a bad call though. Um. So you're just just the charts, okay? If uh, then what would you? Well, yeah, the chart, the charts, and and just like uh, like for so for people who have an, who play eleven dollar ABI, the other thing is there's a lot of misinformation, which is that like <clears throat> all this stuff about like exploiting people versus like GTO. The reality is, and like and the reason is because the people who, to some extent, the people who play um, really high stakes, like they can exploit people who play ten dollar ABIs. Like yeah. you can exploit people who play ten dollar ABI or an eight dollar ABI, and you can beat them up. So because you can beat them up and it's so different you kind of like you kind of get drawn to it but the reality is like when people who are playing ten dollar abis like you're the guy who's not very good at the game um so you don't need to try to exploit the other guy you just need to try to play the game better and so understanding like a lot of the basic principles that go into how to properly play the game whether those are like idea like the concept like understanding the concept i would say understanding like the big ideas is going to be really important understanding the concept of indifference understanding you know ha- having the preflop strategy would be is, is another example of something that i think is really important um indifference preflop strategy understanding like bluff to value ratios um so like if you bet the if you can start with the river um understanding if you if you bet pot how often should you be bluffing um if you bet half pot how often should you be bluffing you know just internalizing some basic ideas understanding so like a big idea would be something like when you get to the river uh in 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 river in terms of river play, okay, um, every single bet, every single range is going to be majority value on the river. The most of most of that range will be value. So if you get to a range with a disproportion in terms of bluffs and value, you need to slow down and think about checking. Um, understanding that like bluffs are a dependent variable. Bluffs are dependent on value. Bluffs can't exist in a vacuum. The nuts can. If you get to the river and you have the nuts and your opponent's not very good, even if the only hand you have is the nuts, and even if your opponent knew you had the nuts, you would still bet. Uh, it's assuming your opponent can't bet, assuming that if you check, the hands go face up. Because you have the nuts, so you might as well bet and hope he misclicks or something. <laughs> if you have a bluff, that's not true, right? So um, so just under- understanding that, that bluffs are a dependent variable, that you need to be able to identify value and then build your bluffs around the value hands that you've identified. Those types of ideas, I think, are uh, important. Along so the I, same I, I, would, I would focus of... on like... A, Go ahead. Just along the kind of same uh, line of thinking, what do you think are the most common leaks you see every time a new student comes to you and, you know, they haven't had any formal coaching and they haven't really worked that hard on their game, but they present their stats to you? Like, what would be what would be the most common things you see? Because obviously, um, when I came to you, there was a lot of low-hanging fruit. There was a lot of easy things to fix. And I'm just wondering, like, are they the same as they were two years ago or where are we at? I can tell that you're in a tough spot, eh? It's really tough. Oh. You finally bluff when I have the first nuts. <laughs> like, well, I had the first nuts. <laughs> um, yeah. So the, I would say. Did you purposely give me that little face facial expression when I did that on the? Because I, yeah, because I did it. I did it an accident before. Because I did. So it you did that on purpose? Because I didn't know if I you did, did it, but you like he did. A, I don't know if you noticed chat, but like he did a little grimace when I, I led it to her. You did that on purpose, so you. I did that you on purpose me. because I because I was doing it by an by on because I was doing it as a mistake before. Uh, you yeah. just leveled and like so. That was, and you that was... and you were paying attention. You were you, you were like paying attention. And I was <laughs> listening to you and stuff. I was like maybe he'll. Yes, I did do it like that. Someone in the chat did say if, uh, if, I, if I showed up with a better hand than you there, it might have been the end. It might have just been the camera went black, you disappeared. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. <laughs> there you go. Game over. Um, sorry, can you... Can, yeah, uh, yeah, so the biggest can, can leaps in, the, in 2021 with uh, students that you uh, get introduced to, not like, you know, people that are... Even maybe even people that are beating like 109s, 215s, 530s, I'm sure they're still... Right, quite... right, right. So... Oh, I was trying to get you. I was trying to get you. What did you have there? Let me see. Nine six. Okay, I should have bet. Um, yeah, biggest leaks. Still, people just folding to to see bet too much. Um, I even do it. Part. I I got a fix for a while, and then I think it was last week we did a lesson, and I'm like a few years later, like it's not a million miles away from where it should be mostly, but I'm still just mm-hmm. I'm still just too. 
Too tight in the blind? Yeah. I would say statistically speaking, it's going to be fold to C bet. Um, it's not very like, it's not, there's, there's going to be, it's going to be like raised first thing is going to be off by a little bit, but like that it's, it's like really easy to fix. It doesn't really matter. The thing that like I work with people on that like takes some time to resolve is, is for sure going to be um, fold, fold to C bet. Just from every position yeah. as well, right? Particularly from the blinds though. Yeah. And then once we, once we get past that, the, the next thing on the list is like, once we get past statistics. Because like the, the statistics part, like that takes a long time. But once we get past statistics, it's going to be river play, especially especially like as far as areas where it's like black and white that they're screwing up. It's going to be river play where, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be river river play and like just like a lack like a complete lack of understanding about um like how the nuts should play or like how how like the how like the, the fifth nuts should play and they're radically different. Um, like the you know in terms of like hand class like the fifth nuts versus like the first nuts where the first nuts is extraordinarily flexible the fifth nuts probably has to bet um and like i, I can say that and like you know that that you know could cause me some you know people be like well now well no it's like not really because when when you because i'll tell people that and they'll know that and we'll work on it and then it'll, t it'll take some weeks before they can resolve all of the issues fully um it just takes time so that's 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 the understanding like theoretically how to bucket hands on the river is is the is the abstract thing that like lifts people's win rates the most where like once they get it their win rate kind of like goes materially higher that's one and then and then the but the statistics one is, is definitely still just like full to see bet ali in the chat asked what's on the line this week well jordan's actually already lost a thousand dollars to me so thank you for spending your friday evening um with me rather than the fam uh, to lose a thousand dollars jordan i really really do appreciate that but uh one yeah, more thing not one more thing i want to talk about i'm sure we'll talk about a few more things but um how did you end up in the content creation world because obviously you were behind the scenes you as far as I could tell, you didn't really put too much on social media anywhere, right? You were just like getting acquired Zero. behind the scenes. You were just doing your thing. And in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, you have kind of taken over um, the Twitch world and a lot of socials. Like uh, you obviously have a team behind you. And I don't know if I was the first person that signed with you that streamed that like I definitely might not be. But now you've got myself, mm -hmm. you've got Parker, you've got Sprague, you recently got the addition of Mr. Valdez, which I assume must have been a pretty proud moment to get, you know, such a big signing. And like, it's pretty much wherever you go on Twitch, like you're going to hear about BBZ, you're going to see BBZ, and obviously that's good for business. But like, what is it that uh, made you uh, get involved? And do you have any plans like that you're going to keep getting bigger? Or of course you're going to try and keep getting bigger, but like, is there, sure. yeah, you just, that's enough. I've asked loads. Sure. So, um, well, I <clears throat> so so staking staking is a risk business um and so we start with we'll go back to like kind of what i had yeah so staking is a is a risk business and it's always intimidating um it's always scary there's always there are always reasons to be like very uncomfortable um and so one of my competitors pads bit b ran one of the most successful staking organizations in the history of online poker i've run one that i've run the other one um us him and then uh pokar i would say are the three well-branded like strong coaching programs economically probably the three most successful houses and he just closed up shop so and that's because i well, i would assume that's because of like you know the outlook on the games um now this was kind of before covid right so yeah. uh so poker was uh, poker's all the game is always getting harder and staking is just has inferior economics to playing you know, if you stake someone, uh, you get half the profits. So if you stake someone and he loses $100,000, you need two different players to win $100,000 for you to break even. Okay. <laughs> so, you, you know, to, to offset 100K in losses, you need 200K in profits. And so that's, 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 that can be quite intimidating. You, obviously, within that, there, then there's people stealing your money. So there's theft. There's, there, there are all these other... Oh, my God. You're <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> then there are um, all these... Like all yeah, all the other stuff that can happen. So it's so it's a, so it's it's a, it's a bit intimidating. And we knew we had a, so Pads decided that like with what he had, they they, they were gonna basically close up shop. Um, and we were never there. Like we were we were still we were just continuing to for, perform at like relatively comparable levels. But staking was was intimidating for sure. And so because the I guess you could say like it's kind of like an opportunity cost thing because like st like the fifteen year future of staking online poker players was like very dark. Yeah, grim. Two years ago, or three, or three years ago, yeah. So it was like I, I wasn't, I wasn't ri like by risking. <laughs> that's a good flop for you, I suppose. Maybe, just maybe, that's a good flop for you. Um, um, Jordan's never shown his face on the internet again. If I go five nil, by the way. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty sick, dude. It's pretty sick. 
Oh, I'm, so, um, I'm such an obnoxious laugh when I'm enjoying things as well. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're having fun. <laughs> like, I'll be honest. If you, if you, if you asked me before we started today, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? I'd have been like, oh, the worst, the worst thing that could happen is I get swept five, five up. I'm like, I would have said something like this. I've been like, it's never gonna happen, so it doesn't matter. And now I'm going into the fifth game, zero and four. I'm just like, well. Uh, it's like, you know, I, I honestly, I'm not like, I would give you $2,000 to, for this to have just been deleted from the world's <laughs> understanding of me getting just massacred by easy with AC. <laughs> but, um, but it, but it is what it is. So try to win the fifth one. Um, I mean, let's, let's get, let's get a little bit of a consolation prize, shall we? Wow. Wow. <laughs> you guys like this guy, huh? You guys like this guy. Holy smokes. Okay. So, so anyways, let's go back. So we were. So, so, so the opportunity cost of what I was risking, right? Exposing my strategies, exposing how I think about no limit hold'em, yeah, um, was the risk of doing that was getting lower because poker was, or because because staking was grim, right? The outlook was grim. Yeah. Um, at the same time, Mac actually, who you know, of um, I think a lot of people yeah, so, might know Mac, are, are familiar yeah, with okay. us on uh, Parker's channel, Mac B two or Mac yeah. B, or Mac B two. I always get it wrong. He hates me for it. Anyway. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So Mac was. Dude, this is pretty messed up, isn't it? Oh my God, I had a king. Did I thought you? I, I thought I was about to just run into the, ace, ace, the, ace, the ace nine value bet, and I was like, oh, this is this is going to be painful for Jordan. I shouldn't be living. If, if I knew you had a king, I would have. I, I might have even checked my end. So I'm glad that I, or, or I don't know, maybe maybe it would have got smaller or something. Like I don't, I don't think I, I should think I'm winning there. King seven seven three deuce was the only one. Seven <laughs> six three deuce was the only ones I beat. I lose to a lot of kings. <laughs> uh. So yes, you got introduced to Mac. Yep, and and Mac was he he kind of played a role in, in terms of like us opening up a little bit and then trying to convince me to stream and open things up more. He played a big role in that, and I was very hesitant to stream because I viewed it as just being kind of like a winner take all type thing, and it was just like a lot of work, and, and I wasn't really prepared for it. So he helped nudge me along for sure with respect to streaming, and then once I streamed. Um, I saw how powerful Twitch was as a platform because I didn't know anything about you guys. Like, no offense. Yeah, no, no, um, no. That's, 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 but I do. I didn't know. I didn't. I knew nothing about Twitch. Like, Twitch wasn't in my. I didn't know who Lex was, and like, I knew who Lex was from Poker After Dark or whatever, or High Stakes Poker yeah, GSN or whatever. But I, I didn't. I didn't know who he was in regards to Twitch. I didn't know who you were. I didn't know Sprague. I didn't know who any streamers were. I didn't yeah, know anything okay. about it. And too busy uh, running streams twenty four seven to be watching yeah, Twitch. Yeah, exactly. I was. Yeah, to be honest, I was just studying. I was studying poker and, and taking care of my team. And I couldn't tell you who the professional poker players were that were successful either. All I was doing was trying to, you know, refine my understanding of No Limit. That was all I was focused on. But then I started streaming. I saw how powerful it was as a platform. Um, and and then like it doesn't like once I see something like work, then it's then it, like, it's easy for me to kind of go all in. And that's essentially what you kind of saw happen. So here we are. Kind of, <laughs> that's, that's that's like the best way to understand it. Did you um, did you enjoy? When you were streaming, because I know you've kind of taken a step back. You're not taking a step back from building the BBZ uh, brand and it's going from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. But um, I personally always really enjoyed your stream. I think that the chats that you had on your stream were usually um, a lot more, um, I'd say just valuable. Like you, you would drop knowledge about like what you're investing in. And like, even though like when I put you on the spot today, it's, it's obviously a little bit harder. But when it comes up more organically, like you would give very good life lessons. You might not have been meaning to do this because you're just talking like openly and being honest and like from your own experience. But I always thought that there was a lot to be learned from watching streams and not just from the poker front. And mm -hmm. I don't know who you consider better. I don't know who is better. But at the time, there was no Ape style. So you were like offering the highest level of poker play on the platform at the time as well. So you very much had that niche locked up. But did you enjoy it um, or did you find it like a job? Because like, I know that's like the question to ask that, you know, you might not want to answer, but it's just the reality. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I'll answer that question. <laughs> it's fine. Um, it was both. So in the beginning, it was more enjoyable for sure. Uh, like, cause you're just doing something brand new and like, you're kind of just rocketing. It was for me, it was like just rocketing upwards. So yeah, was, you, blew, so... you blew up. Like you were, you were, that was obviously before you signed with Andrew and you could play all the sites and you were just like, yeah, we're just going to play high stakes, everything. And you, you, I think the outside looking in, it's always a thing to be careful to say because it's, you know, it's hard to tell what binds, but it seemed like you were on quite the heater. Like it seemed like you were winning a fuck ton of cash. <laughs> Yeah, things were going well. And in the beginning, I mean, like, I, yeah, the first month, I think I took, you know, first month and a half or something of stream, I took second, I think, in a 5K. So, like, things were going well. Um, I final, t I took 10th in another, in a major 5K, WQ 5K. So... You took 10th in the in the main of WQ? 10th, 10th or 11th, maybe? I can't remember. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the first, like, month and a half, two months, like, I was just, I was crushing. 
And so like that was real enjoyable because first of all, you're winning, et cetera, et cetera. So the, now I've, I never really disliked streaming, but it does become a grind in terms of like a job. And um, I'm kind of like, I'm more like a serial opportunist. Like I'm not a long-term business builder. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to, and I know that Billy PVC poker, some you, people you, are You say that, right? Yeah, but you, you say that, but then you obviously, you've, you've stuck to what you're good at for quite some time as well. Sure. But that's just because the opportunities are, are like, you know, this is what I do so, all the time. And so like, for me, the opportunities that I see are just like always here. So yeah. So, but like, I, I'm not someone who's like, I think some people want to have a business like that they're running when they're like 75 or something or like, well, they just want to have it for like forever. And I'm not saying I, I won't have the BBC poker won't last like that, but I have no idea if it will or not. But um, that's not the goal. Like the goal is just to, like make smart decisions, like on a day to day basis. Yeah. with what's in front of me i can so i know i'm cutting across but i cannot imagine you yeah. retired like i just I, I you might you might picture jordan at one point sitting on the beach ordering cocktails no, hanging not, out with the fam a... but like i cannot <laughs> i cannot imagine you just chilling yeah so uh i'm not a big chill chiller so like that's a pretty good read um like if I, you know, even when, like if I take a vacation, I'm reading books about stuff that I'm interested in. That's like, that's like my vacations. Like my vacations are me reading books about subjects that are interesting to, to me that are, and usually they're only interesting to me if they're like valuable to BBZ yeah. or yeah, which, and BBZ could be like my, the investments that I have behind oh, this is the so organization. Neat. I was going to check shows, but you've made me call and you're just going to have a jack with a club and I'm going to hate my life. We both out of four. Jordan's like, I made trips and I still can't win the pot. <laughs> All right, so apologies for going across a little bit. No, no, yeah, no, it's all good. So yeah, so it's, so uh, yeah, so I mean, like I said, your 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 read's not wrong in that it's I'm not super good at doing stuff. I mean, I, not being productive and not being productive. Go when ahead. I when I think like obviously I'm not as all in with as many uh, things going on as you, but I still struggle for complete downtime. I just get bored if I'm just doing nothing. But mm -hmm. Hannah who's my fiance, Franny, who doesn't know, um, she actually doesn't really enjoy if I'm doing nothing for like more than like a couple of days because I just get antsy and I'm like not the most fun to be around. And I just like, you know, like I'm just, I'm just a bit of a nightmare. So she always jokes that she doesn't want me to retire. Would your wife be in a similar boat? Or do you think like if you said tomorrow, like, all right, I've made enough cash, we're just going to chill, going to spend all the time together. Or do you think she's like, Jordan, you need to just do something like you can't be in my grill annoying me all the time. It wouldn't believe me. <laughs> I guess like, like that, would, that, that would just be the uh, that would be the main the main part is she, she would just never believe me and she would just be like she would just be like for how long like oh, it's Laurel here a little bit with the aces <laughs> oh you're a little bit and, scum all right a little bit of redemption for Jordan he makes a four one all right all right all right so yeah she would she would never believe me if I said that I was retiring there there's just what? no chance she'd believe me. I know um I know you've just been absolutely destroyed for one, so you might be worried about your ability to continue to uh, coach people in the future. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but where do you? I, have think, any... I think what you just proved, what you've just proven, is that no, I shouldn't even say. I was gonna say that poker's rigged, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't even say. That's what it's <laughs> you, because you're the sponsor, pro, but I'm not. That's what it's oh like to be God, a sponsor I pro. I almost <laughs> went there and I was like, no, you shouldn't. You should do it you shouldn't do it so uh, we could do it like that but I, I was like yeah that was where my head went I'm like ah oh, maybe I shouldn't say that like on stream so <laughs> well, um, you basically did say it without saying it but, oh, yeah, but that, wait, that version of saying it's different that version of saying like the way that I said it is okay so right. go ahead what are, you gonna, what are you gonna say I was just gonna see like um obviously you talked about things being a little bit grim and I know that the games do tend to get smaller but what do you see happening in the next few years do you see um like do you have any like do you even think about stuff like this or do you just like you said kind concentrate on the day to day or like where do you think the games are going do you think if you continue to work hard and you continue to like you're going to be able to like keep beating the games because people will always be lazy yeah so um games are better than, better than they've ever been um our business like the staking side of it so the risk part of it performed the best it's ever performed pretty much like the best it's performed in a few years last year at least um so and i and i don't see like any signs of that abating this year really um so i think that as far as my comfort level with with online poker, it's the highest today. That's it. This excludes the BBC poker side, like selling content, yeah, all that of course, kind of, of stuff. Um, yeah, just the risk side. So just investing in poker players and like having them gamble. How comfortable are you? I'm the most comfortable I've been in a really long time. And again, I couldn't awesome. have. I love hearing that. It's a bit of positivity. You don't speed. get it too much. Yeah. So I mean, like it's just if we look at like average ROIs, if we look at um, you know when we when we when we look at. Um, kind of like just the distribution across the graph, like how much how much volatility are we experiencing? Like it's just, everything just looks like a much improved profile compared to prior years. 
Um, and like last year was obviously there was a pandemic. It was terrible. Of course. But a lot of people were stuck inside playing online poker. And that was good for, for, for the game. Um, and but, you know, like platforms like Twitch, you know, like Lex is growing every single month. You know, like he's one of the fastest mm. growing streamers, which is kind of insane considering how big he is already. Um and uh, so like someone like that is still meaningfully growing audience and like that drives engagement for poker just across the board and there are a lot of people today i think who are like trying to grow the game and it's not just an effort that's being done by the sites in the same way that it was before so you know like some of my rivals like you know um ben ben cb or like with razor edge or or, or mm-hmm. myself like we're, there's a lot of different people trying to grow the game which before was like that wasn't the case so I don't know, like I'm, I'm more comfortable than I've ever been. Obviously, like you could be intimidated by some of the technology. Um, you know, you could be intimidated by like RTA or, or like real, real-time assistance, you know, people using charts when they're playing or people cheating or something mm-hmm. like that. But um, the site, that's, 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 com- that's something for the sites to deal with for sure. Yeah. And for the and sites like to you, manage. You said this to me before off camera. It's like they're billion dollar businesses. Like they yeah. have such a vested interest in making sure that the games continue to run that you just have to trust that that's what they're going to do. And- yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So it's true that the, that the software is getting better, but it's also true that the person that's got my back is pokerstars.com. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and the person who's trying to cheat is like some guy behind his computer you know, alone. Yeah. And I'm not saying that he's not going to be able to pull it off like in, in, in little instances or whatever, but as far as like a really massively scaled up issue, um, you don't you know, see it for quite some like, time. Yeah, exactly. I'm not as, uh, I'm not as concerned as some other people are. All right, Jordan, I really appreciate you answering all the questions, but now you're going to watch me play a heads up, sit and go. All right. I've got to, I've got to go to your, uh, stream right because you were I, i'm not on it because of the yeah uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna jump into this sit and go i'm gonna cover my cards because i forgot to do that before we are gonna play a one thousand dollar hyper and jordan is gonna critique i can't re- obviously reveal my cards because we're currently on critique no play. critique jo- like, look i know i know you've uh you're clearly maybe need to work on your heads up game a little bit after being smashed for one but uh if you want to just you know, pass a few comments, let us know what you think of how we're getting on here. Wait, my cards look like you can see them a little bit, which is not good. Um, we're just, it's obviously a different layout. I decided to play this guy heads up in the 1k hyper because he's Irish. And if I'm going to lose 1k and it's not my money, I may as well give it back to a fellow Irishman. Card protector's off. Go. No, we can, we can see it, right? It, we're good now. We're good. I now. can't see anything. I can't yeah, you see it. I think you're we're good. good. We're good. We're good. <clears throat> I'll move this up slightly so that you can see the bet sizes. <clears throat> I think at some point, um, given all the streamers that you have uh, signed to BBZ, it would be nice to uh, do like a little uh, game together. Like if we did a little... It, it would. Si- yeah, we should definitely at some point do it. I don't know if you'd be able to handle if you came last out of everyone after this today. But... Uh, dude, I'm fine with losing, bro. I've, I've spent a lot <laughs> of my poker career losing. That's one of the things about poker. It's not like chess. So there's a lot of time that you get, you get very used to losing. Were you, were you losing publicly is new. But... <laughs> What's up? Were you ever a tilter? Like back in the day, were you a death smasher? Were you a... No, 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 never. I never, I was never like that. I had roommates who were like that, um, which was super Same. frustrating to live with. But, um, like big but I was never like that. Yeah. All right, chat, we're going to call. We have a five. Hopefully we're not getting milk. We are getting milk by an eight. I don't know. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I lived with some people that um, like to smash the desk and it was always unexpected. Um, like I wouldn't be, you know, I'd just be sitting there grinding, playing, and then boom, goes the desk. Always a little, uh, a little scary. Yeah. Do you think um, if people tilt, do you think like any of the top winners tilt? Like, do you think, do you think like yes. there's people out? You do, yeah. Hundred um, percent. Liv B was the uh, Olivier Bousquet. Um, yeah. He was like he's like the most notorious, uh, like total lack of emotional control, smash everyone who plays no limit hold them ever <laughs> guy. Um, I played a lot with him. I was playing uh, like not a lot. I played a reasonable amount with him, like. Yeah, I did not. Play, I did not play a lot with him. I, we played a few days when I was playing heads up a lot. Yeah, we played. We played some matches, and um, he was he he was like sitting five hundred or something, and he just started. We were playing seventy five BB, so the same format that you and I were just playing, and he just started open shoving every single hand. I had trips, <clears throat> GG. I had triples as well. Man. All right. Well, at least it was not my money, and it was Jordan's money. But uh, oh, sorry. That, yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't feel too bad. But. Uh, all right, so anyway, so Olivia Busquets was, even though he was crushing everybody and owning souls, he was one of the biggest tilters. Yeah, so, I mean, he had a reputation for tilting, and he was, like, just open shoving every single hand, uh, and, like, for, you know, at 1530 with, with 1500 chip stacks. <laughs> he was just open jam, open jam, open jam, and I would call with, like, Jack 10 suited sometimes and stuff, and, you know, like, he would have 7-4 offsuit. 
And uh, and then he's like, but you know, like while I'm playing against this guy who's doing this, he's like, do you want to play? Do you want to play? Do you want to play 2K heads up? And I was like, no, like, no, because <laughs> like I know that like you're gonna like I don't know if you have control over this or what this is. If this is like a trick, but like I know that like you're gonna smash me if you turn it off. <laughs> so like I was battling at 500s. I was at, uh, I started sitting uh, heads up singles and was transitioning away from six max hypers yeah. to the format. And I climbed from like 100s, 200s, 300s, and I was starting to try to hold lobbies at 500s when he would sit me um, because he's like, who the hell is this guy? And yeah, so like, you know, he's like, you want to play 1Ks? And I'm like, no. Nope. You want to play 2Ks? And I'm like, no. Nope. And then he quit me because he was just like, I'm not going to play this kid. Like, it, it, probably because there's not enough money. Yeah. He's like this way, you know, he's trying to, trying to harpoon me like a whale. Get me to play higher stakes and, and owe me. Dude, I, I, I legitimately used to watch him back in the day on Full Tilt Poker. I used to, he used to be the one of the players that I watched all Lippy the time. Lippy 112, right? Yeah, Is man. it Lippy 112 on Full Tilt? I think it was. Yeah. Think it was the, yeah, all right, was. Jordan. Well, thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. Um, unlucky, um, I just ran absolutely insanely well. If anyone wants to learn anything from Jordan, it's the one reference um, that I just give all the time. Get yourself to bbzpoker.com. There is courses you can get there for $99. Every video is $9, or you can get the charts that Jordan speaks very highly of for $20 a month. I said before and I'll say it again, if it wasn't for this man, you would not have watched me win any scoops ever. I owe him a lot. So Jordan, oh thank you so gosh. much for coming on. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll do it again at some point down the line. All right. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. Speak soon. Bye. See thanks, guys. Everybody. All right. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I think Jordan is one of those people that you can learn a fuck ton off, not only in the poker world, but just in general in life. He is an incredibly intelligent man. He is someone who has been helping a lot of people within the poker community and uh, someone I'm looking up to call a friend as well as a coach. Um, I am going to get out of here. 